The final verdict of the court's citizen jury in the matter of the people versus Canada, the Crown of England, the Vatican, and the Anglican, Catholic, and United Church of Canada, and their officers and other parties for crimes against humanity and criminal conspiracy. Case number one in the docket of the court. Let it be known and duly recorded that the verdict from the jury members reads as follows. After careful deliberation of all the evidence and facts presented to us, and in the absence of any case or response by the defendants, it is the unanimous verdict of we, the citizen jury of the International Common Law Court of Justice, that 1. The 30 named defendants in this case are guilty as charged on the two indictments. That is, they are guilty of committing or aiding and abetting crimes against humanity and of being part of an ongoing criminal conspiracy, and that 2. The named defendants in this case shall receive the full sentence recommended by the prosecution. We, the jury, hereby declare our free and unanimous decision and discharge our duty under the common law. We thank the court for granting us this responsibility. Date of this 21st day of February in the year 2013. This court recognizes the validity and lawfulness of the decision of these jurors according to the common law precedent that a quorum of twelve citizens is required and sufficient for any just and lawful verdict. It is now the duty of this court to confirm this verdict and impose sentencing and enforcement against the defendants. This court therefore finds the thirty named defendants in this case and their institutions guilty as charged on the two counts of the indictment of having committed or aided and abetted crimes against humanity and of being part of an ongoing criminal conspiracy. The court imposes the following sentence on the defendants and their institutions. 1. Each of the defendants is hereby sentenced to 25 years involuntary confinement in a public correction facility without the possibility of parole. 2. The personal assets and property of each of the defendants is forthwith confiscated and will be distributed to the victims of their actions and policies or to the surviving members of the victims' families. The assets and property of the institutions of which the defendants are the responsible officers are hereby publicly expropriated and are declared to be the common wealth and property of the people as a whole. In addition, the archives, records, and facilities of these institutions are declared open and are henceforth in the possession of the people. 4. These institutions of church and state are henceforth and forever legally, politically, and morally disestablished and are prohibited from operating or existing within our communities or anywhere within the jurisdiction of the common law and the law of nations, including the fifteen nations represented in this court. These institutions are permanently banned from our midst. 5. All of the citizens of these nations, and within the jurisdiction of the common law and the law of nations, are hereby and forever enjoined and ordered to abide by and enforce this sentence. These citizens are hereby authorized to act as legal agents of this court and this sentence by peacefully occupying and seizing the property, assets, and movable articles of these institutions of church and state, and declaring them to be under the common ownership of the people. 6. The peace officers of these nations are hereby instructed to assist in the enforcement of this just sentence, and in this process of peaceful reclamation by adhering to their oath of office and keep the peace by protecting the agents of the court and others engaged in the enforcement of this sentence. 7. The legal agents of the court and all those citizens who act to enforce this sentence are, as of March 4, 2013, armed with an international citizen's arrest and reclamation warrant to be issued by the court that authorizes them to enter any facility of the defendants and immediately detain them and their accessories in order to enforce this sentence. 8. Finally, the court orders the continued investigation of the crimes of the defendants and their institutions and their accessories. The costs of this case and subsequent cases arriving from this sentence are levied on the assets of the defendants and their accessories. The defendants are hereby given seven days from, from this date to voluntarily surrender themselves and their assets and property to the agents and common law peace officers of the court or face immediate arrest and confinement by our agents and common law peace officers according to the sentence. A court order is hereby issued to that effect. After seven days, commencing on March 4, 2013, these court officers will begin to make such arrests and enforcements. As of that date, March 4, 2013, 
the property and assets of the named institutions can be lawfully and legally occupied and seized by these officers and all citizens who act to enforce the sentence of the court. The court excuses the jury members and declares its proceedings concluded. This court is adjourned until the commencement of the next case in its docket. Issued and entered into the permanent record of the International Common Law Court of Justice, Monday, February 25th, 2013. In mid-October of 1964, kissing cousins Elizabeth and Philip paid a royal visit to a Catholic residential school for Aboriginal children in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada. William Coombs was 12 years old at the time of the royal visit. I was an inmate at the Kamloops school when we were visited, said Coombs. I remember it was strange because they came by themselves, no big fanfare or nothing but I recognized them and the school principal told us it was the Queen and we all got given new clothes and good food for the first time in months the day before she arrived. The day the Queen got to the school I was part of a group of kids that went on a picnic with her and her husband and some of the priests. We went down to a meadow near Dead Man's Creek. I remember it was weird because we all had to bend down and kiss her foot and she was wearing a white lace boot. After a while, I saw the Queen and her husband leave the picnic with ten children from the school, and those kids never returned. They took away those ten kids and nobody ever saw them again. We never heard anything more about them, and we never met them again even when we were older. They were all from around there, but they all vanished. The group that disappeared was seven boys and three girls in age from six to fourteen years old. They were all from the smart group in the class. Two of the boys were brothers and they were Mady from Quinell. Their last name was Arnous or Arnold. I don't remember the others, just an occasional first name like Cecilia and there was an Edward. What happened was also witnessed by my friend George Adolf who was 11 years old at the time and a student there too. But he's dead now. 
William Coombs, the sole survivor, was scheduled to appear as the star witness at the International Tribunal into Crimes of Church and State in London, England. But William Coombs never made it to the tribunal. He died of unknown causes shortly before he was scheduled to testify. Reverend Kevin Annette, a former minister of the United Church of Canada, believes that William Coombs was murdered to stop him from speaking out about the royal abductions and other crimes of murder and torture that he had witnessed at the school. In a nutshell, what happened was I was letting people speak from the pulpit uh, about the crimes I'd seen in the residential school, the murders and that. I also found out about the land deals that were happening where the church was selling off native land of big logging companies for kickbacks. And uh, I wrote a letter about that to the church. I was fired without cause and eventually thrown out of the church without any due process at all. Uh, you know, but that one thing led to another and I began to work a lot more with the survivors after that, the eyewitnesses to these crimes. That reptilians and, and Draco, uh, you know, the blood sacrifices, the whole Luciferian thing, the, the kids being killed and eaten, I mean, that humans have been eaten and taken off planet, etc., etc., and used for slaves in other colonies, etc. I hate to say that, but that's far worse than what you've just said. It's okay. far worse. Yes, far worse. Uh, yeah. And uh, that the whole blood situation uh, is uh, it's unbelievable. And um, right. I don't know how we say that to the public. I, I don't know. When we got to the moon, we found out a lot of surprises, okay? <clears throat> the Draco reptilians were already there. And we, we, we knew because we had probes when we went non-manned probes that we sent around the moon. So we knew there were facilities on the back side. We knew a whole lot that people didn't talk about. But we were in a position where uh, this moon is not a moon, okay? It's not your moon in the first place. Actually, this is not your planet. Uh, this is their laboratory. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, the Dracos, you mean, or the reptilians? Draco both? reptilian slash okay. reptilian. They're ugly looking, uh, lizard, alligator type people. They wow. got, they got the same skin as Incredible. the lizards got. Right. Okay, and terrible, looking faces. Mm. But then they have the ability to shift, and look like a human. All of them do, okay? Okay, do you think Von Braun was a, a reptilian? No. You really don't? No. Okay. Uh, your president, yes. Oh, what, which one? Uh, George Bush, senior? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And, and Bill Clinton, and this guy you got, oh, just got rid of. Yeah. yeah. Is that still relevant today? I, I ask you, what, what are we? Who are we? Well, we are Americans. We share common hopes, we share common dreams, we share common aspirations. We're going through common struggles. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that everybody here, and I look at this audience and it's representative of the country, everybody here is connected in some fashion. Uh, and our success and our children's success uh, is tied up uh, together. And so, I think most Americans feel that way, mm -hmm. but what is still true is is that you know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain, right? uh, 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 that, that part of our brain that if somebody looks different or sounds different, that there's a part of us that is cautious. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is fight against that, and that's part of what Shirley Sherrod was trying to say in the speech, if you actually read the whole speech, she was acknowledging I have my own biases based on my experiences, but if I am able to look inward and reflect, then I can get beyond my biases. And that's an exercise that all of us have to undergo day in, day out, and it's a, it's a constant struggle. And, uh, uh, you know, it's something that there, there's nobody in America who doesn't have to at some point think about their own racial attitudes. Can I ask but you But if about we do, that? then I think okay. there's no reason we can't. What is still true is, is that yeah, you know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain, right? Uh, 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 that that part of our brain that if somebody looks different or sounds different, that 
there's a part of us that is cautious. You know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain. Basically, there were seven huge craft there. And you said on one of the shows out there, you said um, that the, the reptilians actually showed up be, beneath their craft and they gave the finger. Okay, they were parked around the side of the, uh, the crater. Yeah. Okay, they were not parked on it. They were right. floating above it. Okay, yeah. So there were hundreds of these nine-foot reptilian guys standing with their legs yeah they were all the way across the, uh, the wow. under, uh, underneath their vehicles an internal document acknowledging that queen elizabeth is a shape-shifting reptilian was briefly published as a press release on the royal family's official website yesterday before being taken down but not before alert the internet users who captured screenshots of the extraordinary article and proof that the press release appeared on Google. So we see here that a couple people took some screenshots and they're um, saying that they have proof with these screenshots that this was actually documented and presented to the world by the royal family's official website. Now, it is understood that the press release was a highly classified internal document designed to be released in case of an emergency. For example, if the Queen was seen shape-shifting by thousands of people at a public event and the demand for an explanation became too much to ignore. Now, the Queen and other members of the royal family are different to humans as it is said. This is what they're saying. This is not what World Source Media is stating, but this is just, we're just delivering um, the facts that have been put out there. Now, palace staffers have acknowledged that more and more people are catching glimpses of the queen in her reptilian form, and a statement was prepared in advance in case any of these situations um, were seen by the masses rather than a few people that were inside of her court that they could say that these situations were actually false more than they were realistic. Now, the screenshots that were uh, snapped and captured show um, proof on Google as well as they're stating. And the press release does not use the word reptilian, but does refer to the Queen and other members of the Royal House as different to humans and acknowledges that humanity has evolved to a point where more humans than ever be four can see these others in their true form now it says i pay tribute to the commitment selfness i think it's saying selfless yeah it should be selfless devotion and generosity of spirit shown by my millions of human subjects and i fully expect them to digest this news in a mature in humble fashion nothing has changed together we shall march on this is as the Queen's statement says the palace insider claims that the press release was most likely published by a junior IT staffer however it is not yet clear if it should be considered an accident or an intentional leak on the behalf of the royal family um, definitely let us know what your thoughts on this are and if you're um I guess buying into this type of situation with the Queen, um, if you maybe seen a reptilian of anything around, just let us know about all this stuff going on around your neck of the woods, and um, we will definitely keep you informed and um, let us know what the happenings are around your town and everything else. And this has been World Source Media. In times of chaos and and crisis, what we all tend to do, right? start pointing fingers at where we think the bad guys are where the evil is we all start arguing everybody has different opinions about that please do not forget that hatred or evil whatever you want to call it it's intelligent it's smart and it's invisible it doesn't have a color it doesn't have a race it doesn't have a religion it has no politics it's an invisible snake that while it is planning to make its attack it is thinking to itself I am going to divide my enemy into smaller less strong groups and then I'm going to make them hate each other so that it's easier to take them down 
And as we're all yelling at each other, trying to figure out which group it is that's causing the problem, evil's winning. All around us. So we have to get rid of those labels. These different factions, gay, straight, um, rich, poor, uh, um, mentally ill, not mentally ill, gun owner, not gun owner, none of this can matter anymore. We are unified in our humanity. And the only thing that we all know, we all appreciate in one another is kindness. So this has to come before all things and you must operate relentlessly this way with everything you have. Forget about the money. When you talk to the people, go out and talk to the people. Look them in the eye. Speak to them. Mobilize the kids. They're smart. They're smart and they believe because they are not yet jaded. They believe the world can change. Join the fight against the reptilians and dracos that are basically plundering the galaxies, um, taking over planets, etc. And you've said something very similar to that. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, I'm just saying that this, this is our, our situation. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program. For from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake 
until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems. Well, perhaps there is a simple answer, not an easy answer, but simple. If you and I have the courage to tell our elected officials that we want our national policy based on what we know in our hearts is morally right, we cannot buy our security, our freedom from the threat of the bomb by committing an immorality so great as saying to a billion human beings now enslaved behind the Iron Curtain, give up your dreams of freedom because to save our own skins, we're willing to make a deal with your slave masters. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this, but every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement. And this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. And it gives no choice between peace and war, only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, Eventually, we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? Well, Nikita Khrushchev has told his people he knows what our answer will be. He has told them that we are retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary, because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side, he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price or better read than dead, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard round the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead, who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis, didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay, there is a point beyond which they must not advance. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. And he said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. We will keep in mind and remember that Barry Goldwater has faith in us. He has faith that you and I have the ability 
and the dignity and the right to make our own decisions and determine our own destiny. Thank you very much. When we get into that, if we release it, 70, 80 percent of everybody that listens to your program is going to say, you're smoking pot. I don't believe that. And I don't believe anything you people talk about on extraterrestrial. And it's going to kill what disclosure is trying to do. That's but my you opinion. you know the pedophilia is starting to be exposed everywhere. You know that much is yeah. coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know the part that I don't want to talk about. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, saying as much as you said right now is actually great. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Because you basically are, anyone who's hearing everything else you say is going to have to come to home with this. And if they want to know more, it's out there. It's more and more, it's out there. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> well, I, we can do another interview on that subject so that, you know, this one, it goes out. Because I know you really want this information out. You want people to start to wake up. And we don't want to turn them off to any... We don't want, you just said it, we don't want them to be turned off. We don't want them to not b believe what's being said, okay? I know, but and this, yeah, it's, and some, we can get into it partially, but I'm saying, uh, I yeah. personally don't want to be involved in doing what Bob wants to do. <laughs> it, it's too heavy. I right. think it's going to, I think it's going to really hurt getting more people to get involved in this subject, okay? They're going to say that Bill Tompkins is smoking pot. I don't believe one damn word. I don't want to hear about any of this, okay? Yeah. I don't want to hear about it. My, my philosophy on this, which is humans are not protecting themselves. They're not protected. And so if you don't warn them, you're culpable. The next time somebody gets snatched yeah. and eaten or taken away or their child, and it's, I'm more concerned by the, about the children, obviously, than, than anything else. That's, um, you know. That's it. Well, that's what. And so I, you know, that's my statement. My statement is, you know, I care about the children and I want to protect the children. How can you protect a child? You must tell them, you must tell their parents what's happening, what's really going on on this planet. And it's about time we humans are able to protect ourselves. You know, yeah. there's a lot of New Agers out there who want nothing but to believe that there's ETs, definitely, but they're all hearts and flowers and good guys. Right. Yes. And this is, this is such a dangerous thing to put out there. Because again, you get humans that will not be able to protect themselves. That's and good. also not understand, you know, some people get the wrong idea about Camelot, but I'm actually in favor of the military. <laughs> Um, I know it sounds crazy, but I actually understand that we have a lot of military that are putting their lines, lives on the line yes. in a daily basis to protect humans that have absolutely no idea that they're in danger. You're right. Absolutely. I and, agree. and that's got to change. Yeah, it's got to change. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, and I, I realize that people have no idea what a brave man you are. Oh. You are, I mean, no, I just, I just wanted the statement made on my interview here that the courage that it takes to actually do what you're doing right now is phenomenal. Really it is. See, I can get away with this because I'm a journalist and I can say anything and people will say, she's crazy and just not listen. But someone with your stature, you know, with your reputation and your documentation and who you, where you were and how, where you come from and all of that, um, this is substantial. I don't think people can ignore you. I don't think they can. Well, I, I sure hope they don't. Uh, and uh, because, frankly, we need help. Yeah. We need everybody involved in this. It's, it's not, that's not a lie. We need help. Yes.